Okay. So here we're going to do inequalities. Now, so far we've been working with equations that have an equal sign, but that is not always the case. Sometimes you will have an inequality sign, meaning less than or greater than. And sometimes we can get mixed up with these signs, but I think the best way to remember is that the pointy side goes to the smaller situation or number, and the open end goes to the large. And this sign here means less than or equal to. And equal to because we have part of an equal sign underneath the inequality sign. So this one, the larger number would be on this side and the smaller number would be on this side to the pointy side and this one would be greater than or equal to. And this one, again, the small side would be here, large here, and this is just less than. It is not equal to because there's no part equal sign, and then here's the larger number, the smaller number, and this is greater than. Now, you can solve an inequality equation algebraically, just like you do one with an equal sign. But we have to look through some of the what happens when you do that with the inequality sign. So in here we have A is smaller than B. So this is A is a smaller number and B is a larger number. Now, if I just do an example here, let's say 3 is smaller than 5 and that's correct now if I add a number to the same number to both sides it's not going to change anything the, the, the inequality sign will be the same let's say I add 2 so I add 2 here and I add 2 here this ends up being 5 and this ends up being 7 it's still true 5 is less than 7 it's still true so you can add whatever you want to both sides and you don't need to worry about doing anything with the inequality sign same thing with subtraction if I do the same thing let's say I have 3 is less than 5 again now I'm going to subtract 2 I do the same to both sides, I get 1 is less than 3, that is still true everything's good so you can add or subtract the same number to both sides and the inequality is unchanged. You don't need to worry about doing anything with the inequality sign. Okay, so that's, you can just go along, add and subtract from both sides any way you like, and you don't need to worry about the inequality sign or anything happening with it. Now, here we look, we're going to look at dividing again a is still smaller than b same situation and this rule is stating I can multiply both sides by the same number and nothing will change the sign is still the same or I can divide by the same number and nothing will change so if we look at our example again we have 3 is less than 5 I can times both sides by 2 oops sorry move that up 
And I will get 6 is less than 10. That is still true. We're good there. Now let's divide. Let's say I divide each side by 2. And here I get 1.5 is less than 2.5. That is still true. So we're good there. We don't need to worry about doing anything with the equality sign. It's fine. So the main thing here, though, is that this number was positive. I used a positive number. Okay. So I can multiply or divide by a positive number. And the inequality is unchanged. So we're good there. You can just go along any positive number I can divide or multiply and I don't need to worry about anything with the inequality sign. Okay, now let's look at when we have a negative number. What's going to happen there? So here if C is a negative, negative number, and again a is smaller than B. All right? But notice what happened to the sign when we divided by negative. C is now negative. It has flipped in our rule. And let's see why that might be. We we'll use our same example that we did here. So example Again, 3 is less than 5. Let's just times by negative 1 and see what happens. So 3 times negative 1 versus 5 times negative 1. It's got to be the same number. Remember, same thing to both sides. Here I get negative 3 is less than negative 5. And this is not true. It is not true because negative 3 is actually bigger than negative 5. The bigger the negative number, the smaller it is. So whenever you multiply by a negative number, you need to flip the inequality sign to actually make it hold true. So this needs to flip. So it actually needs to be like this. Flip the sign. So we flipped it to that. As we can see, it's going to be the same if we divide by negative 1 because we're actually going to get the same answers. So if we do that again, 3 is less than 5. I divide by negative 1. and then I get negative 3 is less than negative 5. This is not true. I need to flip. This sign needs to flip. So I need to do negative 3 is greater than negative 5. So we flip the sign. So what this rule is saying, notice here it's flipped. is that whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. When at, whenever you do that, at what point you do that, that's when you need to flip the sign. So if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to, have to flip the sign. And that's because smaller negative numbers are bigger than bigger negative numbers, if you think of it that way. You'd rather be $3 in debt than $5 in debt. So this is larger than 
negative 5. So you need to flip the sign. So we're going to try some examples that are on the back. So you're just going to solve it as if it had an equal sign there. So the first thing we need to do is get all our numbers to one side. So I need to move this 5. So if I minus 5 from both sides, I will get negative 8x. Keep the sign the same. I didn't do anything to change the sign. And then I will get 9. Now I have to divide by negative 8 in order to get x by itself. When I divide by a negative, what do I have to do? I, because I did this, I have to flip sign. And that's because I divided by negative. So then when I get my answer, I write my x, I gotta flip this sign to the opposite. So right now it's less than, I gotta change it to greater than. And it'll just be negative 9 eighths. Remember when you write a negative fraction, you have should bring the negative sign up to the top. Okay, so that is how you solve that one. You just remember, gotta remember to flip the sign. If you divide or multiply by a negative. Okay, we're we'll going to example five here. Um, if I, what do I need to do here? It'd be nice to get rid of this negative four on the bottom because it just doesn't look nice that way. So because I'm dividing, I do the opposite, which is multiplying. And 4 over 4 will cancel out to 1. That'll cancel out to 1. Remember, just making 1s and zeros. And because I times by negative 4 here, I have to times by negative 4 here. And because I times by a negative, you got to flip. Okay, so we times by negative, we're going to flip the, the number, the sign. So I'm going to write 2x plus 7, and i got to flip this sign. Is now greater than, I have to flip it to less than, equal to, and then 4 times 6 is 24, two negatives multiplied makes positive. Now, what do I need to do? I need to get my numbers to one side, so my x is by itself. I'm going to minus 7 here, remember this is equal to 0. Just making 1's and zeros. minus 7 here. And I'm going to get 2x equals 17. And now, oh sorry, not equals, less than or... that habit of doing that, less than or equal to 17. Now I need to divide by 2 And x is less than or equal to 17 halves. You can leave it as an improper fraction. Usually we do with that in algebra. So say later on I had to divide by a negative, then I'd have to flip the sign again. So whenever you do that, multiply or divide by negative, that is when you flip the sign. And now, we'll just look at this example. Sometimes you have an inequality where you have an equation in the middle and then also equations on either side. So what you do is you just you got to do the same to all sides. There's kind of like three sides now to this equation. So if I want to get x by itself in the middle is what you're trying to do is get the variable by itself in the middle. I need to minus 6 from all sides. This gets rid of it, so I have just have x in the middle, because that now equals 0. This now equals negative 5. 
x, and then 8 minus 6 is 2. And what that means is it's just a range in which x can be. If we look at a set, it would be from negative 4, because it's got to be greater than negative 5. Remember, smaller negative <coughs> numbers are bigger. So negative 4 all the way to positive 1. It's got to be less than 2. So that's the range of values that the answer is for this equation. Just to note, again, this means x needs to be less than this number, anything less than that number, or equal to it. So that's what that means. Okay, so now that you've gone through that bit, you can complete worksheet A, and you can see me if you have any questions.